TV, Liberty in the Future. Are you aware that there is no difference between producing a full-length movie and producing a full-length novel? Are you also aware that for every book ever read and produced, there are actually individuals that contributed to its existence? We have individuals like the typesetters, the book editors, the marketers and publishers. Today we will be meeting one of the behind the scenes people. His name is Mr. Steve Shaba. He is an award winning publisher, a quintessential humanist and the CEO of Craft Books Nigeria Limited. He has published several books and we are going to see some of these books and we are also going to try to find out what and how it takes to be a publisher. Come with me. Book TV. Good afternoon sir. Good afternoon. Alright, so I'd uh, like to ask you a series of questions. Can I go ahead now, sir? Yes, please go ahead. Alright, so um, how was growing up like? How was your childhood days? How was it for you? It's a little bit difficult. <laughs> but well, let me do some recollection. Okay. Uh, juggle my memory again, I think. Alright. Maybe it Taking it from the primary school level, All right. I would say it was really interesting. Mm. Had plenty of time to play in the room, <laughs> play football. Okay. Relate, do a lot of home visit, uh, visit one another, mm. and turning back home late. Happily, there was nothing <laughs> to worry about. <laughs> for being kidnapped <laughs> or abducted. Yes. So it was <laughs> really fun. And then uh, I went to a, a mission school. Oh. Where the full complement of very good, dedicated teachers. Mm. So. All right. Good. Also, moving on to the secondary school, also a mission school. Mm. We had, in fact, teachers who were foreigners. Mm. And I remember I had very, very good language and literature teachers. And that probably influenced my choice of okay. uh, discipline later on in the yeah, university. Okay. Yes, we had a literature teacher who was very good. Mm. We used to call him William Shakespeare. <laughs> William was Shakespeare. Really good. <laughs> and then he introduced us to reading some of Shakespeare's works mm -hmm. right in the secondary school. Hamlet, Macbeth, um, and Twilight. some other authors. So it was really interesting. Mm -hmm. And of course, leaving the secondary school. Mm -hmm. All right. I've so. become more or less an adult, uh, <laughs> well, by 18 or so. Mm -hmm. 18 plus. 18 plus. Came back. He came to the University of Ghana to study. study. So I guess. Okay. Uh, became really free. Mm. Uh, I wouldn't say that's still part of my childhood. Uh, no worries. <laughs> yes. So. Okay. Um, what part of the country did you actually grow up or spend most of your childhood days in? Uh, I spent my childhood days in Edo State. Edo. Hmm. Yes. Uh, Koko at the local government area. Okay. Yes, a place called Igara. Igara. Yes, a hilly In town. Edo. Yes. Okay. Uh, you said you went to mission school, like from primary, secondary. Yeah, Sounded precisely. like um, your parents were quite um, religious or something, were they? On the high side? Uh, well, no. I don't think religion had anything to do with it. The mission mm. schools were established and were for mm. anybody, whether you are a Christian, Muslim, could actually or, attend, or unbeliever, or an atheist. Okay. I mean, you could just attend. Mm. Uh, the schools were there. Okay. And we can precisely. Precisely. Yes. Mm, okay. You started um, having interest in literature from secondary school. Primary school. Primary. Because we wow. had a very good. We had good language and literature teachers. Mm. Yes. All right. But um, along the line, I'm so sure something might have actually prompted you to actually delve into this line of um, career. Like what really, really inspired you? Like your inspirations? Well, 
let's take it back to the secondary school. Okay. Because of the interest I I had in language and literature, mm -hmm. literature in particular, drama, I found myself along with somebody who is now in the physical sciences mm, okay. who were representing our school. So, okay. Uh, debating and quiz. Yeah, yeah a lot out of there. Quiz competitions. competitions, debates. Yeah. Yes. Inter school debate competitions. Yes. So okay. I was involved in all of that. So <laughs> really interesting living uh, going for a competition and okay. returning with some with trophy certificates and <laughs> yeah. some Yes, that's talking. true. I know that feeling. Yeah. In every career and choice of you know business line and everything, we all know that there are various challenges that we actually encounter along the way. Uh, how have you been able to actually surmount these challenges that you've been going through or you've faced in the course of your career? Let's put it this way. Okay. Not just this question doesn't have to do with just careers it has right. to do with life itself. life itself life is full of ups and downs sad moments good moments good moods bad moods mm. so finding myself in publishing mm -hmm. i've gone through a lot i started out i've worked in an office as a clerical officer mm. yes i've taught in a primary school I've taught in a secondary school. I did my youth service in a teacher training college. And I've had opportunities to teach informally in the university. And I've given lectures here and there. So, and I've also worked as a civil servant, as a play director, and as a play actor on radio and on stage before I eventually came into publishing out of real interest, mm. real interest. I I'm see. trying to emphasize that. I understand. And I think that once you are interested in it and in anything, in any profession, mm -hmm. you give it your all, put in all your energy, diligence, passion, the enthusiasm, whatever you, you're going to pass through, you will come out triumphant at the end. That's been my philosophy. Okay. And, then, uh, and there wasn't any moment I've given up. I know that uh, yeah, businesses come and some collapse, but somehow I've managed We've managed to weather the storm, storm. and what we have been doing is to come up with a lot, brainstorm, come up with uh, suggestions how to navigate through the storms, and and somehow we'll be doing that. That's really really yeah. impressive. Yeah. All right, sir. So, uh, if there is any other profession you would have actually ventured into, what would it have been? Aside from publishing, to be a teacher, a teacher, a lecturer in the university. university. Yes. Why is that? That was my real ambition in life. Okay. To teach, because I've I've been blessed all along, right from my childhood days, with very good, dedicated teachers. Primary mm. school, secondary school, coming to the university, I studied drama and I had the best teachers. I'm proud of them. Drama, English, philosophy. And they've impacted my life tremendously. Mm. So we, for, uh, for crying out loud, if you have a very good mentor, you would like to be like the mentor. That's true. Yes, there's no point running away. If I can take you off and um, go to the scripture, you find a man of God called Elijah, and he had a servant called Elisha. With all the challenges, all the hurdles, Elisha wanted to be like Elijah. 
That's true. Yes, so. That's really, really true. Um, all right, so you're married, right? I'm so yes, sure I'm of that. Married. And you have children. Have children. All right, so uh, any of your children actually towing this um, line of career or something? Um, not precisely. My oh. first daughter is using the, uh, the University of Ibadan. That's cool. She's in the sciences. Oh, okay. But she's Perfect. very, very good in the arts. In I the arts section? Uh, even from the SS2 level, mm. good literature in English, English language, distinctions. Wow, that's impressive. So, she writes poems, she writes plays, she writes stories. So, the second one too, Mm -hmm. who is interested in becoming a lawyer and then the other, the third one wants to be an engineer. But the, the good thing about it is that all of them, they love the arts. They read. When we publish books, I'll be surprised a book that will take us so many months to bring out from manuscript to the finished Finish book. book. Oh, dump, dump the books on them. <laughs> one one in the following day, they finished reading a book of over 300 pages. That's really, really impressive. To really find out if they understood what you like about this book, what is this book about, and they'll tell me. How do you feel about it? Oh, I don't like the ending of this particular one. Oh, this particular book made me cry, whatever. I say, okay, that's good. That's really, so, really nice. What am I trying to say in effect at the end of the day, whatever they end up going to read, this is whatever you go to read in university doesn't really, really matter. There's what mm. is called a, a gift. True. Your gift can see you through. That's why you have a lot of people who, for instance, a lot of writers in Nigeria, for instance, uh, James N. Henshaw was not a literature person, but he was best known uh, for his writings, not even for his medical profession. Cyprian de Quincy was a pharmacist, but we know him more. Yes. As of a course. writer. Yes. So, all over like that, you know, somebody, uh, Dr. Wale Okedi, you know, a medical doctor, doctor. but he's known best as a writer. I can go on and on. Mm -hmm. So, you can read any the basic thing is to be to have a good edu education and be well grounded so if any of them tomorrow want to come up and uh, uh, walk in my shoes <laughs> beautiful that's good do you help them publish their books too in any way no no they are not published yes. oh okay yes. all right still on that starting. line yes oh. i'm talking of uh, who? 17 plus oh. 15, 13. Okay, so. okay. All right, sir. I, I would actually like to meet some of your staff. That's if you would permit me to. Oh, very well. Why not? All yes. right. Thank you very much, sir. Okay. Would you want to meet them now? Absolutely. I would love to. Okay. Book TV. You have a... Mr. Tunde Shaba is in charge of uh, publishing, the publishing manager. Hi, yes. Mr. Tunde. And out here, you have Mr. Babaji De Arogumasa, the marketing manager. Oh, he coordinates market. sales and marketing and okay. publicity. Okay, all right, yes. sir. That's really impressive. Good afternoon, sir. And you have uh, one of our editors here. Yeah? Oh. Ms. Uh, Omotola Okunlola. Good afternoon. Uh, <laughs> yes. Really nice to meet you. And uh, here you have the type setting department and uh, head type setter, Mrs. Adejoke Oyekon. Okay, that's it. Uh, yes, that's uh, basically the uh, our key staffers here. All right, so that's yes. really good. So, um, so who actually does the bulk of the work? Uh, does it fall back to you? Them. No, the bulk of the work is done by the editors and the typesetters. Oh, that's how. Because hard. the two make up the publishing department and then of course 
you have the support department, sales and marketing, and then you also have the supporting people out there. Out there, okay. Uh, we firm out things for people to do for them. Okay. Printing, and then you have uh, the artists who work for us too. And uh, of course, we use studios when we want to uh, do what is called color separation. Color separation? Yes. Okay. Of, uh, uh, color sections in books and of the covers of mm. those books. Okay, let's digress a little from the right. books. The publishing business, from your description and explanation, it sounds quite stressful and definitely you have ways of actually relaxing, trying to let go of the steam of the effect of the stress. So how do you do that? I relax by I walk Oh. Yes, I go to the gym. Mm. I play long tennis once in a while. Oh, that's and good. Of course. Yeah, and then I, of course, I relax in a in a membership club where I play the game of uh, draft. I play Scrabble. Oh, <laughs> that's the mental tasking yeah. you will say. It is. But uh, my my best way of relaxing is when I break myself down completely is in the presence of God, ah, praising God. That's the best. <laughs> listening to, yeah, very good music. All your stress is gone. <laughs> I hope you know that. I it's understand. Right there in the scriptures. <laughs> yes, I do, <laughs> sir. Jesus Christ said, come to me, all you that labor, Live and, and, I'll I give you rest. and I will give you rest. <laughs> in his presence, you have that fullness of joy. So. Uh, You'll be refreshed and you come back to do your work. Mm. Yeah. Um, have you ever found yourself in any embarrassing situation ever that I was refused to leave your memory? Oh, well, yes. <laughs> okay. And I, that's a, it was a near-death situation. Oh. Yeah. Uh, if you were to be elected the president of Nigeria, what would be the first three things you actually do? Hmm. The first three things yes. I would do is to make education compulsory mm. right from the cradle to the secondary school level. Okay. Yes. Compulsory. Compulsory education. It would be an offense if for any parent not to release <laughs> the, the child to go to school. Number two. Okay. I will make sure that we have libraries in the local government head quarters, 774 local government areas in Nigeria. in Nigeria, at least a library, and the government, I'll make sure that government purchases three copies of every published book that, are, that has been vetted and is good for the sanity and for the, of, 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 of the children who are going to read those books. And then the tough thing. I will abolish statism in Nigeria. This mm. is state of origin thing. Okay. It's Why is that? Us. Then we can move and do one can move and do other things. But these three things are very dear to me. Thank you very much for your time. You. I really You're appreciate welcome. your effort yes. towards the success of this. For the fact that you even gave us a few hours out of your busy schedule to even talk to you. Thank you very much, sir. Mm.